haven't slept for months. Spent business days fading away, and for what? Afraid of backsliding, so I slipped into madness. Tallies scratched into bare walls. Avoiding that I'm not as young as I used to be. So I hide all the things that remind me of her. So I can't stop running, demonizing what I once loved. The music, the clothes, and you. Because I don't like how it feels to hear it after everything's changed. And what would it mean for me to have stayed the same all these years? Maybe I'm still sane. But finally it gets too much. So I lay down and watch. I sleep and be still. And it's scary to be not as young as you used to be. But it's better to feel that than nothing at all. Running through years till you finally fall. And now I'm painting over the walls. Oh my gosh, hi, it's been too long that's my bad honestly a lot has been occurring lately that has been like life-changing things are occurring um i'm moving in a few days this is probably going to be my last video in this apartment so let's just give her a round of applause take her all in oh my god is my apartment messy am i about to expose myself guys i'm gonna miss my walls okay can't even not the walls like oh my god I really did make this apartment so cute, or this room I should say, because I just have a room in an apartment, but look. Should I give you guys like a brief like tour? Okay. These are all my books, my magazines. My favorite magazine is Interview Magazine. Uh, Andy Warhol made it in like the 80s. It's so good. Um, that's Kim Kardashian's butt. Um, below it, I have some candles from Bath and Body Works because I'm Caucasian. There's also, there's a lot of Vogue's. I don't really read the Vogue's anymore, but I used to love them. I'm gonna collect them. There's a lot of books. Let me know if you want me to do a book haul or collection, because I will. Um, and then on the walls, just like letters from people. Um, uh, my mom, my brother, a uh, stylist I worked for, who I'm gonna be neighbors with. Um, my, my dad, yeah. And then my friend, who uh, has given me a lot of letters. Anyway, so yeah, this is kind of like a farewell to my apartment. Um, I'm so grateful, honestly, that I got to live here for like over a year. Uh, this was the first place I lived in LA. And oh my god, I forgot about my records, guys. I will- okay, you can't see. You can't see them, but I will do a record haul if threatened. So yeah, lots of exciting things have been happening for me and it kind of made me want to talk about the idea of like resistance and fear after you get what you want so basically your entire life and perspective is governed by your thoughts right you can choose to have fearful thoughts or you can choose to have thoughts that are based in faith and gratitude and you know it's it's extremely challenging to not choose the fearful thoughts when you're consistently working towards something that you don't have yet right you have fears of like oh will i ever get there will i will everything work out what's the worst case scenario but at the end of the day whatever you're thinking whether it's that i don't want this to happen or that i do want this to happen the thing that you're thinking about happening is what's gonna happen does that make sense so like for example i just got approved for this apartment which is like crazy because i just applied by myself and i could have had the thought of like i don't want to not get approved i don't want to have nowhere to live i don't want to have to find somewhere really quickly that i don't like i don't want to have to live with other people i don't want to have to move back home and like all those thoughts even though i'm saying i don't want blank i'm still putting energy toward those thoughts and therefore those thoughts are materializing in the world and so during this application process all i thought about was i love my apartment i love living there i love it it's perfect it's so beautiful i love where it is i love what it looks like all that and that's just how i've been trying to think about things lately that's how i've been like training retraining my thoughts but what i wanted to point out is that you know i think a lot of the times we idealize things in our heads and we think that once we get to a certain point you know all our fear will be gone all of our you know times of feeling desperate will be gone but what i realized is that once you get to that next level you know you're only challenged even further your faith and your belief in god and yourself you know 
it's only challenged once you get to that next level that you've been wanting to be at. And I've really, really, really felt that, you know, because obviously once you get the thing you want, it's so exciting and you're celebrating and everything. But then as soon as that period is over, it comes a whole new set of not problems, but things that your mind can view as problems and start attaching fear onto. And so you have to be very careful even after you succeed. It's like the moments after you succeed are just as pivotal as the moments leading up to it, you know? And you have to stay just as faithful and mindful of your thoughts and what you're bringing in to your space because, you know, it can be hard to maintain that high frequency that, you know, brought you to the thing that you wanted but you would only be brought there if you were ready for it. And that's what I keep telling myself is like, no matter what my mind tries to see as a fear or an issue, you know, I know that I am only here because I'm ready to be here, you know? And like, there's so many things that I am going to experience in the future that I haven't been ready for in the past, you know? And, and really, sometimes it can be frustrating because like you can get these visions from God or whatever you believe in, and you get this vision of something and it's so clear it is so clear and it feels like it's what needs to be happening now it's so clear and it's not happening now so you get so frustrated and so confused and and so doubtful you know when in reality that vision that you saw that you were given may not happen for 10 20 years you might have to literally become a whole different person before you before that vision is your reality and it's like the time it takes for you to become a different person <laughs> is necessary so i'm just thinking about like this small example of like an, getting an apartment right me a year ago i could not have even like the thought of doing this what i'm preparing to do and how much i'm investing all this stuff like the thought of it would have made me literally want to die <laughs> Like, there's just no way, but in the year I have become such a different person, you know, and challenged myself in so many ways and learned and integrated so many lessons that now I'm this version of myself that's ready to handle that. So that was only given to me because I was ready to handle it and able to hold the frequency, you know, not in a space where once I'm given the thing that I want, I'm so like, I can't handle it because it's so overwhelming, you know? One of my teachers today was talking about how we have trapped emotions in the body and certain emotions or subconscious beliefs are ultimately people's downfalls right she named like two people that are very prominent in culture right now who are being defamed and discredited and canceled and all of that because they're operating out of force rather than power and the difference she explained between force and power is that force, you know, it demands recognition, it demands an audience, it demands being noticed and being given attention and being seen, whereas power just is. Power is just an inner knowing and a mutual understanding that isn't, is not requesting anything from anyone else, it just is. Force is always met with opposition. So whenever you go at something with that force that needs recognition, it needs, you know, praise, you're always going to be met with opposition, always. Whereas power, you're not. You just are existing in that space. And I think um, when we give that power away, it, it, makes us, <laughs> it makes us thirsty for other people's approval, which I've talked about this before. It was like in my video where I was talking about like needing people's approval on like the way you look. And it's like... Once you give up that power, you your whole perception of reality is subjective to whoever's viewing you and whoever is speaking their version of you back at you, you know, that's what you just believe. Like especially with singing, I found that it's a it's an extremely like vulnerable thing and that's why it's it's hard for a lot of people to do and it's uncomfortable for a lot of people to do even around people that you're close to, you know, it can be like super uncomfortable and that and it brings up a lot of like emotions that are trapped in the body, you know, and and human anatomy, you know, reacts to stress and reacts to being uncomfortable and reacts to those emotions without your conscious mind even realizing it. So, 
you know, if you have like fear trapped in you and someone asks you to sing or to perform or to write or to speak at an event or something, your mind will just be like, oh, I'm nervous, but your body will have this huge like reaction that's uncontrollable that doesn't even make sense to you because it's based off the, mo the emotions that have been trapped in your body that are now coming out in a physical reaction, you know? So it's, it's just all very interesting. And, and I just challenge you to, you know, to stay in your power and to be grateful and just take some time. I'm telling you, this has changed like m everything for me. Take some time every morning to just say thank you and like be grateful to whatever it is you believe in, you know, and, and try to have fun. Like this sounds so stupid, but to someone like me who was like such a worrier and such like a fear-based, worry-based, anxiety-based person, you know, like the thought of even, oh, just have fun, like that sounded so stupid because I was like, it doesn't matter, I have to be the best, like who cares about fun? But it's like, be the best at what? Like, it's just like, I don't understand how you can put a numeric quality on something as like, you know, as vague as what singing is and what acting is you know art should be fun and an expression and a freedom a freedom at all costs and that's how you need to start living your life is being free and being joyful and finding ways to embody those emotions or else you're just gonna continue in a cycle of worry and guilt and fear and shame which is like fine but i don't want to live like that so freedom at all costs people and if being joyful sounds embarrassing or cringe to you you're a little bit sad and i want you to journal about it anyway i love you and thank you for watching and my next video will be in my next apartment oh my god i'm so excited let me know um if you have any thoughts or questions and i'll see you in my next video bye i love you <laughs> yeah there's still flowers i should have watered them more don't come for me. Okay, bye.